so uh, as as you see, uh, I subtitled my my our uh, our presentation part of the Europe with the highest burden of cervical cancer. So these are the last global data. Uh, uh, world age standardized rates of incidence and mortality from cervical cancer. And you see, unfortunately, Central and Eastern Europe, it's leading here. Uh, so this is well known for, for years and the major push uh, uh, and the first time in history that we summarize reliable data coming from Eastern and Central Europe was uh, done uh, 10 years ago. So 10 years ago, we started and end up with this supplement uh, in vaccine in 2013 where we, under the guest editor of, uh, of uh, Xavier Bosch and five of us co-editoring. Co and this is actually the, uh, the most reliable source of information uh, on HPV distribution, genotypes present, uh, uh, screening policies and vaccination policies in, the, in this part of the world. Uh, because of importance, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, supplement was also translated in Russia uh, to allow also Russian colleagues to read uh, the data here. So we, in this supplement, actually we covered uh, uh, a large part of the world, uh, come, starting from the Western part, from Slovenia, my country here, Czech Republic to the Eastern part of the Russia. And we covered actually 28 countries. And already uh, uh, in, the, in that time, we actually decided to divide all these countries into two parts. And uh, uh, the first, Part was covered uh, was lead by me, and we covered here the the the, the fifteen countries which are listed here, uh, and we summarize everything in this in this uh, paper in two thousand thirteen. And uh, another part of the countries, the the the, the all this uh, review was uh, uh, lead by Svetlana, who will present you update on the on the another part of the of the countries. Uh, for the first time, we also prepared the specially tailored recommendations for cervical cancer pre prevention in Central Eastern Europe, uh, also translated in Russian. Uh, and uh, since we collect a lot of data uh, uh, during this survey and we were not able to publish this in this supplement, there was additional uh, 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 long paper summarizing situation in different countries in the, in the region. So what I will present you today is an uh, it's update of, of this early, early survey. The last, we are usually doing this every one or two years. The last one we did was in November 2019. I try uh, uh, you know, to update this uh, in, with the current situation, but it was uh, impossible to reach colleagues during the COVID in the last months. So we will rely, rely on the data uh, uh, which we collected last time in November 2019. We used the uh, literature search of the peer-reviewed journals, abstract for the main conferences, official websites of WHO, ECDC, other informations, government websites, updates by emails, and we use also our internal files. So if, if you look at this, uh, this map, it's everything looks fantastic. So that means out of 15 countries, 10 countries has organized cervical cancer screening and only five opportunistic. But as you know, the devil is always in details. So I will just to summarize you now the real situation. Actually, among these um, 10 countries which have organized cervical cancer screening, the only country which actually exceeded 70% coverage in three years, which is actually the, 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 the level which is requested by European Commission, uh, the Slovenia is the only one. So the Hungary uh, start organized screening in 2004, but they have very low coverage in organized screening, but I don't know, uh, we, we can discuss this later on, but Hungarian uh, women prefer to go outside the program. So around 60% of all attendees is outside in opportunistic program and only 10% actually uh, participate in organized screening. In Czech Republic, Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia, they have a partially functional organized uh, cervical cancer screening, but low coverage is reported. It's the same story uh, for Romania. For Montenegro, this is the only country which actually are using HPV-based uh, screening, but as you see, the coverage, it's very low and did not really increase substantially uh, uh, during the first two years. In Bulgaria, they, they implemented organized uh, screening program at the end of 2018. Uh, coverage rates are not available. Target population, it's, uh, it's here. The similar story in Slovakia, they just started uh, organized screening program. So maybe two countries which we need to mention, these are countries which implemented organized screening and then from 
unknown, many, mainly political reasons, stop organized screening and return back to the chaotic opportunistic screening. So the, the first one is Croatia. So they start uh, organized screening in December 2012. Then uh, the coverage they reached in two years was around 30%. And then politicians decide to stop organized screening in January and return back to the opportunity screening. And the same story was in Poland. They started in 2004, coverage obtained 70%, and then decide to stop invitations and uh, stop, start again opportunistic screening. So if I summarize the situation in 2019 in these 15 countries, so uh, 10 countries have officially proclaimed organized cervical cancer screening. But as you see, the only in a single country coverage, it's over 70%. In great majority of countries with organized screening, coverage data are not available, uh, but we assume there is a substantial attendance outside official national screening programs uh, or they're using opportunistic settings. In five countries out of 15, uh, there is only opportunistic screening with insufficient funding and infrastructure, low population coverage, moderate to poor quality cytology, National HP-based organized uh, cervical screening only in a single country, but with extremely low coverage, in the remaining countries, uh, you know, we are still using cytology. Uh, we have uh, over screening of the some population and under screening on, on, on the rest. So we have a relatively high coverage in women below 40 and very poor coverage in older women. There is a lack of financial resources, uh, cervical cancer, and in general, women health. Uh, it's not high on political agenda in the region. And we have also several country specific problems, like for example, in, in, in Bosnia, there is no population registry. So I will just now you present what we are doing in Slovenia. Uh, the Slovenia is the uh, country I am working. It's the only country which have organized cervical cancer screening, which have a coverage over 70%. Uh, and we also have the national uh, immunization program and coverage current coverage is around 60%. So our, uh, program is targeting women between 20 and 64. We screen every three years after two consecutive negative smears. We use still conventional cytology and cytology is interpreted by certified cytologists. Uh, uh, our sensitivity, uh, cross-sectional sensitivity of cytology uh, for CN2 plus is around 66%, CN3 80%. And we use HPV reflex testing for five indications. We have integration of the Central uh, National Registry of Cytology, Histology, and HPV test results. Uh, uh, we have a Central National Population Registry and also National Cancer Registry. So what we did, it's actually uh, quite remarkable and we are really uh, proud of this. Uh, it's only country showing such progress in Eastern and Central Europe. So what we did actually in 2003, we had, uh, we had uh, the a standardized rate by world population about 15.3. And we had the coverage around 40% in opportunistic screening and uh, with uh, 170,000 smears per year. What we are doing now, it's the same number of the smears, but we uh, actually shut down approximately two thirds of the all private cytological laboratory with the poor quality. So the now cytology is only performed in the certified cytological laboratory who report all data in the central registry, same is for HPV, we have a uh, two HPV laboratories, which are actually providing all data in the registry. And you see here that the, our incidence dropped uh, more than half with the same number of the smears, just switching from opportunistic screening to the organized screening with cytology. Uh, here, unfortunately, this is in Slovenian, but you can see here the coverage in the, in the last, uh, last years uh, based on different age categories. We have very high coverage, uh, almost 90% in the, in, in the youngest uh, categories, but we are now uh, putting a lot of efforts to increase the coverage and you see we are successful in the, in the, in the, uh, in the years, uh, last years in, the, in these older categories. So what we are now considering for the four years, last four years is to switch from cytology-based screening to the HP-based screening. But as you know, HP-based screening should be offered uh, based on European uh, guidelines only in organized screening uh, settings then, and this is why we are proud that we first switched actually a relatively functioning system from opportunistic to organized screening, and now it's much easier to, to switch to the HP-based screening. So what we, uh, we tried to sensitize gyne gynecologists to use HPV uh, already in 2010, so we have uh, 
five indications where gynecologists can use HPV-based uh, screen, HPV-based uh, triage for the borderline cytology or HP test of cure. It's uh, free of charge. It's uh, performed uh, by the same test in the two national laboratories. And these are indications here. So then we did, uh, uh, to prepare for the HPV-based screening, we needed uh, actually the, 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 uh, the, 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 the burden of the HPV high-risk infections measured by, high, by validated clinical assays in different age categories. Uh, for, so for this reason, we performed the first screening round uh, in 2009, 2010, and then we um, uh, repeat this after three years with the different HPV tests. And this is actually the, 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 the curve of the prevalence of infection with a high risk uh, measured now because some of these samples was also used in Valgent with a several uh, validated clinical assays. And it's clear like in majority of the countries that it is impossible without proper triage to make any HP-based screening uh, in the earlier, earlier ages here around 25 or 30. Uh, with the follow-up of the our cohort, actually we proved uh, for the first time in this part of the, of the of the Europe, actually that the CIN2 plus cases are uh, only accumulated on, uh, in in cytology negative uh, 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 females and non in HPV negative. So what we are now considering, and the plan was actually for this year, but because of COVID situation, this will be now uh, delayed. Actually, we will. Uh, switch now from, because we are still using traditional cytology, we will switch to the liquid-based cytology, and this sample will be used uh, for the younger generations, most probably uh, below 35 years, will be liquid-based cytology screening with HPV triage, and above 35 will be, will be HPV-based screening with the cytology triage. So we hope that uh, also some countries in the region will follow us because the situation in Eastern and Central Europe is that people are really not very impressed with the success of Netherlands or Belgium or, or Western Europe, but they need to have a champions in uh, Eastern or Central Europe to follow. So this is very important. So there are also many things which we need to fight uh, in Eastern and Central Europe. And I listed here some of the, of the uh, perception problems which are obstacle to the to for introduction of the of the hp based screening so many people believe that the tests who have more genotypes uh, these are the better hp test many people believe the higher price is the better hp test also unfortunately manufacturing is fighting each other uh, for the for the for the for the part of the market they they also play several bizarre case reports uh, biased evaluations uh, uh, one of the stories which is always around its L1 deletion story. Uh, then uh, people tend to believe that the long screening rounds are unsafe because they said even with the shorter rounds, they miss uh, carcinomas. Can you imagine now if you just prolong the, the, the uh, round? There are several lobbies, uh, cytological lobby, gynecological lobby, colposcopic lobby. So we need to find a new role for all these people uh, to be part of the, of the whole story. Uh, in general, people in Central Europe and Eastern Europe believe that, that there are several, whatever we are doing, including COVID, it's experiment, which are serving diagnostic therapeutic companies. There's a general mistrust in the ineffective public health system. You see that you organized, for example, uh, organized cervical cancer screening, and then people prefer to go on private opportunistic screening because they, they, they believe that the best doctors are in private sector and the worst doctors are working in a, in a public sector. And this is why they choose opportunistic screening and, and not, for example, organized screening. So before we start, I think we need to prevent several, several stories which are always around when people try to find the excuse why not to start HPV-based screening. So one, it's always, you know, now, you know, we have a special genotype, so we are a special country, no one has our genotype distribution. We need to stop these stories. We have enough genotype distribution studies from the region. We just need to use the data which are already available. The same story is that everyone would like to additionally evaluate the already clinically validated HPV test. We need just to use uh, uh, data which are already there. We know exactly which tests are validated and they will not perform worse in, 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 in a particular country, I'm pretty sure. We, we, did, we uh, need to uh, stop to complicate, not re re reinvent the wheel, but trust experienced colleagues and their results. 
uh, we should not waste the time because the situation currently is that one out of 50 uh, 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 females in, the, in, the, in, in this region of 28 countries will develop cervical cancer this year. And there are several COVID new problems, shift interest of public and politicians, temporary pause of cervical cancer screening programs, manufacturers shifting toward the new niche market, uh, uh, COVID and new normal. So just to see what, and to, to, to show you what we are missing if we, are, if we will wait uh, long. So this is the, the nice paper which we published a few, a few years ago, trying, we just used six countries in the region here and try to predict uh, what would happen if we stay with the current screening we have, or we make substantial change and switch to the organized screening. And the, here are the cases which could be avoided if we uh, uh, start a new pathway and new screening, organized screening, uh, HP-based screening. You see here, the majority, uh, we use also the, the largest country uh, in, the, in the region, so with this approach, we could, for example, prevent more than 150,000 cases, just uh, organizing uh, a screening in a in, in normal way. So I would like to end up here and then Svetlana will take over. I would like to thank to all these colleagues. Uh, they helped me uh, uh, during these 10 years, provide me local data because majority of these data are unpublished. And if I made any substantial uh, 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 mistake in particular country, you need to blame these people and not me because they provide me the data. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you.